How much more can you tell about the Knight Rider audio plays? Well, obviously enough to justify part 3. Today is exclusively about the CDs and I will take a very close look at them. In my previous video I speculated about when the CDs were released. I also had expressed my view that with these CDs as the first release Europa had almost certainly run the market acceptance test. In the end I can only speculate whether this was recorded successful or not. The fact that only the first 6 episodes of the overall 26 audio plays were released on CDs should speak for itself. From my point of view this could also be due to the miserable quality that Europa has presented here. Let's start with any front cover. For comparison the matching MC front cover is just besides. Do you notice something? So? Ok, the Knight Rider logo has a different design language than on the MC and if you look closely you'll notice that the Knight Rider lettering has the symbol for a registered trademark while the MC uses trademark throughout all episodes. But I don't even care about that little detail. But take a closer look again. Isn't the Europa logo missing somewhere? Honestly, Europa has been releasing records since 1967. The Europa logo was always prominently featured on all their records and music cassettes. How could this be forgotten? Especially since it was printed correctly on all the Knight Rider music cassettes? This is only on the backside of the inlay. All in all, that seems a bit strange because Europa always printed this on their records as well as on the MCs. It is true that Europa only started to print the production year in the mid 80s as it can be seen on the cover of this MC of the three investigators from around 1986. Stop nitpicking, how important is a logo? Well, if I ask you a different question, if it were your label and your logo is forgotten on the prints, what would you think of that? Look at this. Even on the CD there is no logo anywhere. The CD itself lacks information about who the publisher of the CD is, let alone the year of release. How this suddenly was forgotten three years later, together with the fact that the logo is missing as well, only allows for one conclusion. Namely, that in the production of these CDs, the usual quality standards were obviously not applied. Just look at the front of this cover. This is just a plain sheet of paper, glossy, but nowhere near the quality or the thickness used on the MC covers. And the back of the cover is just blank. Now you could argue that these are just front covers and that I just really didn't pay attention here. But the quality flaws go much deeper. Here we see the track view in XLD, a program to extract audio CDs into the MP3 format. I had already read about this on various online portals, that the CDs were only mastered with one single track. But then, seeing this with your own eyes is something completely different. So the question arises, why? Track markers for CDs are no rocket science. With a cassette, the playback starts after a stop at the exact point where you were before. With a CD, you always start at track zero and fast forwarding on CDs is totally impractical. One could at least have made a division into the two tracks of the sides A and B of the music cassette. That would still have been off the mark, but at least a little better. Someone recently asked me on Facebook whether the CDs were any different from the content of the MCs. Although I never listened to the CDs until recently, my answer was a definite no. They had to be the same stories. However, I got a little curious and wanted to know more about it. Well, the good news is, the audio plays are indeed one-to-one -one identical. One-to-one -one identical? For real? Oh yes, and how one-to-one -one they actually are, I only noticed when I listened to the middle section of the tracks exactly where the MCs would switch over from side A to side B. I was shocked. Really shocked. As a matter of fact, I would at least have expected that the CD version, if it only was mastered with a single track, would at least have a continuous mix. A version where the scene transition is shortened and flowing, not abruptly like on the CD. But listen for yourself. 
nutze sie. The interesting thing is that Europa definitely made a new remix for the MC Club Edition 1. So let's take a quick look at the music cassette Club Edition 1, which includes regular episodes 1 and 2. Listen to how the transition from side A to side B sounds on the single MC. And here's the same transition on the club edition. But I haven't even talked yet about the even most embarrassing blunder. Exactly. You can read about it in many places online, but that just can't be true. Or can it? Let's listen to the last few seconds of CD6. That's the end. Over and out. All done. Finished. Okay, let me tell you that. This is not an editing error in this video. No, the last few seconds at the end of the track are in fact missing. Don't get me wrong, I totally love audio plays, but what Europa delivered back then with the Knight Rider CDs was really no highlight at all. But fortunately we live in the digital age and some of the mistakes can easily be corrected in post-editing. So I ripped the CDs entirely into the WAV format and I provided it with track indices in post-processing to split them into individual mp3 files. I also took the liberty of adding the missing seconds to the last track of CD6. Apart from the mastering errors, the question of quality naturally arises. Here are two audio samples for you to compare. Aber das ist doch nicht der Rede wert. Du hast recht. Ja, so war das auch wieder nicht gemeint. Wie wird eigentlich die Überschrift Ihrer Doktorarbeit lauten, Karen? Michael Knight, der süßeste Kämpfer gegen das Verbrechen in ganz Amerika. Aber das ist doch nicht der Rede wert. Du hast recht. Ja, so war das auch wieder nicht gemeint. Wie wird eigentlich die Überschrift Ihrer Doktorarbeit lauten, Karen? Michael Knight, der süßeste Kämpfer gegen das Verbrechen in ganz Amerika. For sure, the tapes have slightly different sound dynamics, but overall this is neglectable for the audio plays. The playback speed is rather disturbing, where we have a certain shift in speed when we're comparing the audio cassette to the CD. It's a real pity that no further CDs were released after episode 6. This does away with the possibility of tapping into the best quality source for the MP3 conversion, which undoubtedly is the CDs. Though I then went one step further with my restoration. As already mentioned, the CDs are very rare and hard to get. And if so, the prices are usually in the upper two digit or in the lower three digit range, even if the condition of the CDs is sometimes more than questionable and in no way justifies the price. Patience is then required a lot of times until you find an acceptable offer. Sometimes there is one like this for episode 6 where the front cover is missing. But as I have already pointed out, the CD covers were of inferior quality anyway. And so I designed the cover for episode 6 on the PC myself. To accomplish that, I had a mediocre online scan of the cover, as well as my own cover scans of episode 3 to 5 to compare with. And with a little patience and a very close look, I was finally able to reproduce and print the cover true to the likeness of the original. And while this is certainly not an original cover, every element is placed exactly as it was on the original. You really would have to take a very very close look to see the difference. Ok ok, so this is where I faked it a little bit, but look at this! It looks so much better in the collection with the cover. And this concludes my third retrospective on the Knight Rider audio plays. I hope you liked this video. If so, then please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Which video would you like to see next? 
let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.